Good morning, my name is Oscar Mendes, and I would like to say welcome back to Favaloro Foundation University Hospital. On my right side, Dr. Gustavo Lev, and also Joaquin, our fellow from Manabí in Ecuador. Uh, Christian, our technician, um, Matias as a nurse, uh, Fabian as a uh, product specialist uh, from Minus, and here our anesthesiologist, uh, who is uh, Herman. We have prepared uh, quite a unusual case yeah, you will see during the presentation. Let's uh, share the PowerPoint presentation, please. So let's uh, move on for, this is our 17 case for uh, uh, mainstream live. Let's go with the next slide, please. So he is a 78 years old male presented with bilateral common iliac aneurysm. Actually, he suffered from hypertension and dyslipidemia, and he also suffered from many years from symptomatic renal lithiasis and also some uh, uh, um, colonic polyps. That's why he was studied and uh, uh, both uh, iliac aneurysm were found. Next. So he has a normal ACG, normal uh, blood test. The echo doppel also showed a preserved left ventricular ejection fraction with some hypertrophy. The stress echo didn't show any ischemia. Next. So he underwent uh, uh, a CT scan in another hospital. And uh, this is the CT scan uh, that uh, he showed to me on the first uh, visit here at Fowler Foundation. As you can observe there, in this anxious CT reconstruction, uh, both uh, common iliac arteries has, uh, have uh, a, a, a significant aneurysm. At the beginning, he, I thought it was an easy case for uh, bilateral stenting, but then when I review the CT scan, I will show you to you the, the planar views. Next. Here we can observe near the bifurcation, there is a very, uh, I mean, proximal di dilatation with uh, some thrombus uh, containing on, in, on this aneurysm, and then the distal end of the common iliac artery on the right side of the panel, which is about uh, 13 or 14 for both uh, sides. So. Uh, at the end is uh, uh, both uh, bilateral aneurysm. The, the left side is the biggest with the 35 millimeters. The right side is uh, 26 or something like this and a little bit more uh, complicated according with this imaging. And also in this uh, image, what I am trying to show you that the proximal landing zone is not so long. And that's why we consider it was not adequate for my first thought, which was to implant uh, bilateral uh, cover stenting. Next. So this is the 3D reconstruction, the, the abdominal infrarenal abdominal aorta, uh, showing that infrarenal diameters are uh, not too big, 18 millimeters, and the distal uh, at, at the level of the bifurcation is 16, with the length of 9.5 centimeters, uh, from the renals to the bifurcation. So it's also not too long. Next. And this is the right uh, common iliac artery showing this uh, complicated uh, aneurysm with a length of uh, 7.9 centimeters until the bifurcation with the uh, internal iliac artery and the maximum diameter of 25 millimeters. The landing zone uh, distally is uh, 14 millimeters in diameter. Next. And this is the left uh, iliac artery with a common length of uh, 6.5 centimeters with a maximum diameter of uh, 35 at the level of aneurysm with a distal landing zone of 13 millimeters. And uh, for bilateral, uh, the external iliac arteries are quite normal. The diameters are about uh, 10 uh, millimeters. Next. So in summary, is a patient quite young with bilateral iliac aneurysm without an adequate uh, proximal landing zone. That's uh, the, also the, though, I mean, this is the main reason why we have decided to implant a uh, bifurcated EVAR device uh, according with the discussion of the heart team and, and our vascular surgeons. Next. So this is our plan. We have a, per a bilateral percutaneous access uh, with a surgical standby as always. 
And we also decided, and then we can discuss uh, with Dr. Lev and, uh, and with the audience, to use an ultra low profile device, especially because the distal uh, aorta near the, the carrefour, uh, near the bifurcation, is only uh, 16 millimeters. So probably it's not too big uh, to, to accept or not compressing a bilateral uh, 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 iliac from the regular devices that we are using. Next. So that's why we have decided to use this ultra low profile device, which is uh, bifurcated with the main body uh, with the 14 millimeters and the contralateral uh, uh, for the stamp, uh, for the left iliac stamp, uh, iliac, uh, excuse me, limb, is a 12 uh, French uh, device. So it's a 19 all uh, cover stand with a PT graph and the stand is uh, electro polish uh, 19 -old. next this is the configuration this is the proximal uh, part of the device for proximal ceiling with the stand closely uh, positioning with the laser, laser cut uh, crowns and hooks for proximal fixation probably here is not too much important because uh, we don't have problem with the with the proximal uh, part with the proximal next of uh, an abdominal aneurysm Actually, the, the infrarenal aorta is quite normal, a little bit small. Next, and those are uh, the, the, I mean, uh, the diameters, 14 for, for, the, for the main body. With this uh, device that I'm going to show you, it's an inline sheath that we can use then to introduce the homolateral uh, iliac uh, branch. Next, this is uh, the main body configuration. 45 millimeter for the main body, then the two uh, limbs, uh, the, the, the right or the homolateral side is uh, 55, so it's gonna be uh, 11, 10 uh, millimeters from the homolateral side and about uh, 80 from the contralateral side. So we have enough space in this abdominal aorta, which uh, length is uh, 10 centimeters. And then we have bilateral uh, branches that we can adapt it for uh, this uh, configuration. And this stem configuration also allows us to push or to pull a little bit to gain or to compress a little bit to uh, trying to not, uh, uh, I mean, compromise uh, the bifurcation with the hypogastric arteries. Next. So this is the markers that we have to observe and the proximal part, this mark should be uh, below the, the, the inferior border of the renal ostium. And then we have this uh, seven shape uh, marker at the level of the bifurcation that it should be like a capital I uh, to be sure that it's uh, uh, exactly in the, in the opposite side of uh, the introduction of the main body. If we uh, uh, observe a seven con shape configuration, uh, it means that the, the, the contralateral uh, um, limb is gonna be in anterior uh, position. And if it is on the right uh, uh, letter, it means that this stamp is gonna be on the posterior orientation. And then we have markers uh, for overlapping with, the, with each uh, iliac branch that we are going to introduce next. So let's go back here and uh, to the lab and we will show you what we have already done. So we should be live here. Okay, perfect. So back a poquito. So we have a bilateral puncture. So we have done a six French uh, bilateral puncture. We uh, Pre-close with one proglide here, which is going to be a 12 French uh, device, and two proglides here, which is going to be 14 French. We have not put any protection uh, wire below, as we show it uh, in the previous case that we did uh, one or two weeks uh, before, because we consider this a, a normal artery, not too big holes, and it's probably easy to fix with this uh, proglides and then if we have to uh, hold the groin for some minutes it's going to be uh, okay so we have done a, an angiography uh, can you show people the uh, sorry we use uh, echo 
to the puncture to be sure that we are on the anterior posterior wall of the common femoral artery. This is the angiography, which is almost the same that the angiography you are observing on the right side of the monitor. If you can share the imaging of the CT also, probably you will see the overlapping for the vessel navigator that we are using to have imaging. So uh, this is the hemodynamic. The other monitor which is on is gonna be uh, the vessel navigator if you can share this. Perfect. So you can observe they are the CT scan on the right side of the panel, uh, the angiography. So after that, we have uh, left uh, a stiff wire from our right side, and now we are introducing a uh, right uh, shutkin to have a marker for the left uh, renal artery. Meanwhile, I would ask uh, Gustavo to share his thought about this case if he also would have chosen this uh, similar device or would have done something different. Thank you, Oscar. Well, this is an interesting and uncommon case. As you know, uh, less than 30% of, of aneurysm, aorta, abdominal aneurysm cases are only iliac aneurysm cases. So uh, that's it's a, a very uncommon case. Um, we have here uh, two possibilities. The easy one to, as you told us, to implant two stents. Pro is easy, cons, the risk of uh, endolic type one and the very difficult solution or the, that, the, that problem. Yeah, that's, uh, we have done some case, we have to tell the truth to the audience and we have had this uh, problem that Dr. Levis already mentioned. And it's extremely difficult because if we have proximal endolic, we have to put <coughs> other cover stand doing a kissing stand into the abdominal aorta. But this stand at the end of, of the procedure also have gathers uh, that where you can also have an endolic that you have to embolize from uh, the upper side, going from uh, humeral or radial or something like this. But at the end, you are complicating. There is not, in my opinion, any benefits uh, from this solution. Uh, also because uh, the proximal part is uh, 14, 15 millimeters in diameter. Uh, cover stand are not that big. Uh, the proximal, or I mean, the, the branches of these devices uh, at the end is the same that using a balloon expandable or self-expandable balloon. That's why I would rather choose uh, this solution because I think we will might have a better ceiling. I know that also we have difficulties which is related with a small diameter of the aorta, and that's why we selected this device. Mm -hmm. Probably somebody could ask us why not using another low profile device like the Ancura device, mm -hmm. which is a two very long stand with a D shape configuration, which should be uh, in front of each other from below the renals and to the distal end. This is, could have been another solution, probably easier than this, but Ancura device is not so commonly used here in Argentina. Probably in the next future, we will have more experience with this device. So meanwhile, Gustavo is gonna bring the device, which is already open. So it is a hydrophilic device. Here you can observe the device. Uh, the device uh, also has an inline sheath that we are going to disengage when we complete the delivery of the device. This is the, the, the delivery system. This is the security mark here. we show you here. Perfect, uh, here. I wait for the camera. Perfect. So this is the security mark that's gonna be moved forward. And then I can start rotating to deliver it very slowly, the device. And when we are finished, we have to uh, disengage the proximal uh, hooks of the device for the proximal fixation. And I, I also had to retrieve this. Uh, Fabiana is gonna remember us all the steps. He is the uh, product specialist. So Joaquin, you should move here. 
He had to uh, hold the groin. Gustavo, you might have the wire. Uh, while Joaquin is holding the groin, I'm going to retrieve these 11 French sheets. And then we can proceed with the introduction of the device. So, uh, Fabian, if you have any observation, even, even in Spanish, you can do it. I think that the audience would give us a feedback. Yeah, I've oh. forgotten to mention, thank you, Gustavo, uh, that uh, we have Dr. Andres Rodriguez as a digital moderator. So he is going to bring the question from the audience to us, and we will try to answer all of them. So here we have to check two things. First, the proximal landing zone, uh, zoom people, uh, below the renal arteries, move, the, move a little bit below here. Uh, according to the CT that you are observing in the left uh, bottom panel, uh, it is okay. Then we have to orientate the, by rotating the device here in this uh, eye configuration, I will show you with a marker so you can realize what I am talking about. This is the marker, which is an, an eye configuration. It means that both branches are exactly side by side in this uh, configuration. And then I also have to check uh, distal uh, uh, for the contralateral uh, limb, which is okay, it's above the bifurcation, is something that we are observing on the CT scan panel that you are observing below my hands. So at the end, here is, I think it's a good position. Gustavo can probably do a test with the answer just for double check or triple check in this case. The device rotate a little bit. I had to move again to keep this uh, eye configuration of the marker. Now I am moving the security to to the proximal part of the device, and then I, I start rotating. The halo libre because it va a mover. So I am trying not to lose the orientation. Probably, Gustavo, you can make a check. We are a little low, but remember that the we have a very proximal good. part is absolutely normal. The device rotate a little bit. I counterclock. Wise rotation, I am doing. Test Gustavo. Perfect. So the orientation is perfect now. So now we have the contralateral stamp is released. Yes. Now oh, it's okay. Okay. And now I'm gonna counterclock this part. From here also. That sometimes it's important to make a little harder. And then, as you observe, the proximal hook were released exactly in the position we want, we want it, which is below the left uh, renal artery. So it's okay. You can move there. And now, Christian is going to make zoom because we have to introduce the wire and we use hydrophilic wire to uh, go. Let me uh, fix my scrap. Okay, thank you. So now zoom. Okay, we will see here. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, this is the first risk step with the inability to open both uh, iliac branches. Absolutely. You see that here we are out. We need a, uh, yes, a pin. The pin for rotation. So probably this is the toughest part. Probably we can go near. Yes. 
Yeah, it's, now it's we are in. Mid minimally rotate a bit uh, anterior, would be? Yeah, exactly. And now uh, so we can do something for those who are not familiar with these maneuvers. Please go there, move it to the here. So if you are in doubt about this, you can rotate the catheter, the catheter inside the device. And if it is rotating freely, like here, you are absolutely sure you are inside. Then you can do an ancho or whatever. We are going to introduce another stiff wire here. And the wire is digitally. We have a loop on the tip to prevent any damage of the aortic arc. And Dr. Lev is retrie retrieving the right shank Shatkin catheter. We like the pigtail mark. Uh, we might introduce the marked uh, pigtail. pigtail. And then we can do an angio uh, to check where is the ostium of the hypogastric artery. We can do road mapping, so we we'll, might have triple check uh, regarding the distal landing zone. So, más abajo, Pipora. Okay. Here is okay. So, let's see. Soltame un poquito. Okay. This is okay. Leave this here. I will do a manual injection from here just to see where is the hypogastric artery. Let's see, sorry. Roll map. So it's okay, and you should uh, rotate uh, to the right side a little bit there, okay. So now you can do, uh, okay, this yeah, is the perfect see. orientation. Uh, now please mapping, row mapping. Okay, so we have a very nice image in. So we have the pigtail there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. So we are going to use a hundred, hundred centimeter length uh, device or uh, this. Uh, we had to decide between 100 or 120. I would say 120 because we have nine centimeter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have three for the overlapping. Actually, the, the, the exact, exact measure should be 11, but the device is from 10 to, uh, to 12 centimeters. Sorry for the noise, we are opening the envelopment. We have the markers here. Why are you seeing? My colleagues are flashing the device. Okay. Yes. Yes, think. Yes, uh, this is, a, an, uh, as I told you, it's an uh, ultra low profile device uh, with this uh, hydrophilic coating sheath. It's a, a very uh, good device uh, for uh, calcified arteries, for a small uh, external iliac arteries. Uh, we have uh, acceptable experience. I have to tell you that this is a not more common device that we are using because it was introduced in the market uh, very recently. But for these special cases, we can use. Uh, it's very precise for the de deployment. I, uh, probably from the uh, drawback, it is not very, I mean, radio pack. So you have to have a good imaging or if the patient is too, I mean, I would say too big, let's see in this way, sometimes the, the, the vision of the device is not uh, too precise. Here is a very uh, normal uh, guy, and although you can observe here when I am pressing mm -hmm. the fluoro, that the device is uh, quite difficult to see. The only thing that I am putting attention now is the distal landing zone, which is 
let me see here. This is the marker of the distal landing zone. So I have to be sure that I am not closing the hypogastric artery. And then I have to overlap here the markers. This marker should be above this, this, the, this marker between this and this. And the other one is co uh, in a coincidence with the distal uh, part. The delivery system is exactly the same. So do you agree? So Sally? So our te technical specialist is checking. So he agrees. So let me uh, do Ancho. And probably we are sure about the position. Maybe we can take uh, the Saka, the room mapping, because we might have a better floor here. Yeah, but if we go down, okay, mm -hmm. we are at a little bit down. So, but uh, now we are closing the hypogastric, but we can push. So we can shorten the device okay. while delivering. So let's start here. I will try not to go over the R marker. Meanwhile, we can uh, comment uh, as the case yes. days before that there's a lot of experience with this uh, device over the world. And uh, the last uh, published were in the Journal of Vascular Therapy with 42 patients with very good results, very good clinical success, and low incidence of uh, endolic, especially type 2. So as you have observed, I released the proximal fixation so the device is open proximally. And now while Gustavo is gonna rotate here, I'm gonna push a little bit to keep the device exactly above the bifurcation of the hypogastric. Okay, perfect. Hopefully we are okay. So now we have to disengage here. I'm gonna advance the device a little bit and yeah, and we can pull everything out. Okay, so Gustavo is gonna push the wire, please. While retrieving the delivery system, we can do ballooning here. This is one of the other advantages. You have the introducer sheet inside the the artery. Yeah, the inline, inline sheet, the balloon, uh, it's okay. Yes. Uh, the company is from China. Uh, Minos uh, is the name of the device. Uh, Micropore is uh, the company. Is that correct? Pull the wire. Yeah. So we are going to balloon in here. A little bit. Okay. Have some air here. So remember that this inflation are manual. You have to have a sensation and the, uh, I mean, rectangular configuration of the balloon to be sure that the inflation is okay. So now I'm going to introduce all together using the balloon as the, yes. Now, I'm gonna dilate here. Now let's go proximal. Arriba. Arriba, people. Okay. So here is the connection. You can observe that we have a good space for the homolateral branch and a good space for the contralateral. Let's, yeah, don't worry about saving. Let's go Arriba. proximal. Frente. Okay. Please don't kill. Tavo, no, 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 le saques el zoom. No sé qué hiciste. Volve la zoom para que la audiencia lo vea bien. Okay. 
So anyway, here we don't need too much because remember that it's not an abdominal aortic aneurysm, it's iliac aneurysm, okay? So, uh, salir el zoom. Mostrame abajo. Saca el zoom. Okay, probably you have to aspirate better, Gustavo. As uh, Joaquin, aspire. Keep aspirating. We have some resistance here for retriving. Okay. The sheath is a, it's a very good sheath, but it's a little bit weak. So you have to take care of that during advancing or retrieving, especially the big balloon, which uh, should be this balloon. Remember that the coda balloon is not going through on this small 12 French sheet. This is the name of this balloon is Reliant. Okay, perfect. So give me contrast media to check. Yes. Here. Would that position. To I think the position you is the okay. No, 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 no. Mark, no. No, no, just uh, an injection here. Just to check the, the landing zone of the, it's okay, of the contralateral branch. Okay, it's perfect. It's where we have chosen to deliver the device. Perfect. Now we have to complete the delivery. Poneme saca zoom. Que se vea todo. Sacalo al zoom. Okay, solta. Okay, then I'm sheet. We have to complete the delivery. I am delivering the homolateral the homolateral branch. branch. Exactly. Okay. Now we have to disengage here. Perfect. So Joaquin is gonna hold the sheet and we can pull everything out. Paying attention that is coming freely. Let me see. Soltamelo un poquito. Now, okay. To be sure that we are not engaging. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we have to do the same for this side. Okay. Let's go to the left oblique view. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the challenge here is, uh, as I have already mentioned, the distal aortic bifurcation, which is a little bit small, and we need a pigtail, okay. And the second one is to have a good distal landing zone, because especially on the left side, because the distal landing zone, it was not too long, uh, when you observe the, the angel here, the angel CT, it looks perfect. Actually, the proximal also looks perfect. But remember that we are not observing the, the thrombus burden inside the aneurysm. So the distant landing zone was not longer than 14 millimeters. So this is probably challenging because we have to, to have a good ceiling because if not, we are going to have a distal uh, uh, late endolic or late distal endolic. So here, once again, we can put the mapping for checking the distance. So here again, now we have one, two, three, four, five, seven. So, so we are going to use the hundred. The 100. 10. Uh, 100 centimeters, uh, 100 millimeters, because length. remember it's in length, of course, because the proximal, the three per centimeters are inside uh, the main body branch. So we have the remaining seven centimeters out of the main body. So I will wait, or I will retrieve the pigtail, leaving the sheet, do it taking care of the sheath because it's so hydrophilic as, um, and thin that it's very easy to lose the position. Regarding, uh, sorry, 
but because the noise. Regarding the limitation, uh, I don't know if you have a heavily calcified proximal neck, like the case we did last week. We uh, leave the, the room with the small type one endolig that we are going to check uh, in, during the follow-up. I promise to show you in one or two months uh, to be sure that this uh, proximal endolig was sealed, although no ideal, but was sealed. Uh, if not, we had to put a, a bare metal, big bare metal stand uh, to fix this uh, proximal landing zone. So, hold the wire. So, we have to introduce this. You have we, to engage. Yeah, you have to hear a clock like now. And now it's perfect. And now I have to advance everything together. So now we are, we have a marker. We have the CT scan, so we can uh, release the the roadmap in Sakalo because the vision is not uh, perfect, especially for the audience. So as you can observe, once again, I will try to mark for you here. Landmarks. Here is the distal landing zone near the where we have the mark for the the ostium of the hypogastric artery. And approximately, uh, I think we are a little bit high, but we can correct it. The proximal mark is here. Okay. Okay. So people don't move. So I'm going to release the security part of the device here, moving forward. And then I start rotating. So keeping my vision on the proximal and distal landing zone, both. So here we don't have to push or pull because the length of the device is perfect for this uh, situation. Okay, great. So now I have to release the proximal part. Let me fix this. And now pulling here, we are releasing the proximal part of the device. Now it is supposed after disengaging that is ready to retire. Uh, yes, absolutely. I am moving a little bit. Gustavo is pushing the wire. The device was disengaged and I'm holding the sheet. It is near the distal end, and now we are going to do ballooning in an AP position uh, with zoom. Uh, Andres, any other question from the audience? Yeah. So let me let me ask one. Eh? Well, this is a good question. I don't know, but I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have uh, the certainty of that, but uh, there is not another uh, disease in this patient. So assume we have to think about this. Uh, I mean, yeah, this it's, it's, a, it's, an, know, it's a, an elderly patient with uh, some cardiovascular risk factors. Yeah. Uh, any uh, uh, no other comorbidities, so no inflammatory uh, disease. No inflammatory disease. That you are right. So I think that. Yeah. Sure? yeah. Okay. So is, I'm moving, and Gustavo is inflating. So this is the proximal connection. It's okay. Let me move a little bit here. So once again, I I I can see enough space for the contralateral side. This is important because if one of the sides, side branches are collapses, you might have an acute or late uh, thrombosis, which is a potential risk when you are treating these uh, small aortas or diffuse iliac arteries. So probably one question from my side would be for, uh, for our tech specialist, if uh, if uh, they have done cases, too many cases with this device, we don't, we haven't done so far, 
but uh, see. Sí. Okay, so probably the question would be how much do you oversize for doing a chimney? Quanto más oversizing assess? Okay, so the oversizing should be almost the same that uh, when we are using other devices approved for chimney, like the Metronic device or any other device. Come a little bit up, arriba. Here is okay. Yes, Gustavo. Uh, I'm too low. Yes. Here. So remember the patient is under conscious sedation. I don't know if we are going to have a perfect imaging, but we will try. Fortunately, none of the uh, internal iliac arteries were compromised. Uh, uh, if they were, which techniques would we would like to use? Well, this is, uh, again, a very good question. We have done here a case that we use a bifurcated iliac graph, but this is not the case because the iliac are too small. So the, the iliac thrombus are uh, completely, almost completely full uh, go with the uh, thrombus. So probably it's not going to be enough space uh, to deploy a bifurcated device uh, here. There is not room to have two branches in these common iliac arteries. Mm -hmm. So no way. Uh, the only solution would have been uh, hypogastric embolization coils or plug, uh, I, I told in, in this case uh, before, because we have to embolize the contralateral side. Uh, in Argentina, most of the cases we have to use coil because the price, but the plug is easier uh, and uh, probably faster. But the uh, coils is not difficult. It takes a little bit more time, but you can do it with a five French catheter. Mm -hmm. For uh, introducing a, a plug device, you have to go with a contralateral introducer set, six French at least, that sometimes in angulated or quite a close uh, bifurcated aorta, it's not that easy to go around from or go to contralateral. So this is the two possibility. But once again, here from this case, the take home would be that if we have compromise of the hypogastric artery, we shouldn't have used, or we couldn't have used a bifurcated uh, iliac device. Um, and what, what's your opinion about uh, a periscope or the bell technique if we have uh, a, a, a great uh, iliac primitive arteries? Uh, bottom bell uh, could be a solution if the, the distal landing zone would have been dilated. But to be honest, I would have used a bottom bell uh, or oh, elephant uh, yes. uh, device. Uh, only if the distal landing zone was longer than two centimeters, because if not, it could dilate uh, uh, during the long term follow up. But at the end, we would end up with the distal endoleak. And mm -hmm. this is also the reason why we are not uh, using any more uh, any, I mean, uh, a straightforward device for the for the abdominal aortic aneurysm with a distal landing zone like one or two centimeters because uh, at the end, this landing zone is gonna dilate and you will have uh, distal endoleaks. That's why we always, although probably the carrefour is, is normal, anyway, we are using bifurcated devices. Mm -hmm. uh, that the, I mean, the sandwich device, which would be another option to put an stand yes. from above and the other stand, cover stand from below, could be a solution, but once again, we, we don't have enough space in the proximal landing zone. It's a 14. So if we had to introduce two 10 uh, uh, millimeters in diameter, both is going to be collapsed and probably will end up with a both uh, stent thrombosis. So that's why I think this is the best solution in, in this case. But anyway, it's good to to bear in mind all these potential uh, or all these possible solutions in cases for iliac aneurysm, which is at the end, this is the case of today. Yeah. Let's do the ancho. And we hopefully have the expected outcome. Wonderful. I think yes, the- Very good. Let's freeze there. So probably, uh, let's check here. Stop, P boy. So we have, we have a perfect uh, proximal landing zone. It was expected. Distant landing zone is perfect. Then the question is if we should dilate with mm -hmm. the uh, kissing balloon like uh, eight millimeters 
remembering that the distal landing uh, aorta was 16. I think so. I think that we uh, it will be uh, referred to, to you post delay. Yeah, here at the bifurcation. The bifurcation, yes. Because with the bifurcation is bio a little bit compressed. So yes. let's go with the two balloons we have already prepared. Let me. Uh, Gustavo can receive the balloon and you yes. help me with the wire. I think yeah, that we, we can decrease the risk of uh, yeah, branch thrombosis. Yes, absolutely. So this is the reason. Or here, Otro you can observe why we have chosen this device and not the others. So Joaquin pulling the catheter. And uh, so we are, we have uh, 10 remaining minutes. Yes. So we can introduce regular balloons so we can have a perfect control of the pressure. They are non compliant or minimally, or minimally compliant. So to be sure, we are not over dilating. More contrast. Although yeah. we, are, we have protected because we have a stand graph there. So Gustavo is going to connect. Take your time because we are on yeah, time. time. Yes. We are, we are going to do this. I think, well, we can do a final answer and then we can uh, retrieve everything and to close. Let's inflate eight. Okay, zoom there. Perfect. You can observe there yeah. the indentation on the on the balloons. 10, 12. 10, 12. 12. Okay. 14. Yes. Okay, perfect. That's it. So I will hold both sheets. You can retrieve both balloons. Wait a little bit for deflation. Yeah. Uh, dale, Joaquín, saca el otro. Okay, I'm holding the sheath. They are pulling the balloons. Whenever you are ready, we can introduce the pigtail. And do a final answer, and that's it. Let me help you. Okay. Déjalo ahí, Joaquín, nomás. Okay. Give me the pigtail again, the okay. regular pigtail. Yes. Uh, just uh, put a 15 uh, cc. We don't need to see or to check any leak. So just to see if we have obtained a better dilatation of the, especially the contralateral side. But anyway, if it's not okay, I think it was not too bad. We don't have to put a stand there because the the the, the other solution would be to put a bare metal stand inside. But I think it's not necessary. Okay, let's go. Check Gustavo. I think it's better now. Yes, yes and we yes. have a better flow too. Mm -hmm. So give me the regular wire, the, the regular mm -hmm. one. Yes. And um, we are closing the vascular access. And whenever we finish, I move to the other room for the tabby case. Yes. The pigtail out. Uh -huh. Short one. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, give me the right uh, shotkin so we can leave the wire a little bit up. Okay. Probably you are right. We should use the amplets. Because this wire is too short. I don't want to close without the wire, just in case. Hold it. Yes. So now we are going to use the amplitude wire. Thank you. We are still on time. We have started four minutes late. Take this out, Gustavo. Yes. Venia Cajoquín. 
Oh, sorry. Be careful. Paul de Groin, please. Podemos revertir. Joaquin is holding the groin. We are going to introduce a six French sheath to be sure that we are reaching an acceptable ceiling. Uh, to be sure we don't need to use any additional device. Movete para tu lado, people. Okay, don't, don't. So in these cases, we follow up the patient with the CT scans, uh, three, six, uh, a year, a year the first year, then one per year, and we give to all, all these kind of patients aspirin and clopidogrel. Clopidogrel for six months, aspirin all life. So as you can observe, with only one proglide, we are okay. So I think we don't need any additional thing. We can pull everything out. Hold it. Let me. Yes, remove everything, Gustavo. Okay. So just in, in case we can, Soltalo. As you can observe, this is the importance of this uh, low-profile low profile device. device. With only one proglide, it's almost, almost completely sealed the, the groin without the heparin reversion so far. Soltalo. So now with the second proglide, you can observe that it's completely sealed. Anyway, uh, he is going to hold for some minutes, just in case. And now we are going to do the same for the contralateral side because here we only have one proline. So Joaquin is going to hold the groin again. I'm going to remove the sheath. I'm going to introduce the six French device just in case we have bleeding. We can use the eight uh, French angio seal just in case. Please have it here. Just in case. No, don't, uh, no, no, no. Eh? Soltalo. Release. I think once, once again, everything is okay. So we can pull everything out. We don't need anything else just to to hold the groin for some minutes uh, after the heparin reversion and everything is, is going to be done. So I think it was a very good demonstration of how to treat bilater bilateral iliac aneurysm. We should move. Let me move uh, myself. If you can bring the camera, levanta un poco el monitor. Así, eso. Levantalo. Okay, so our face are on the mm -hmm. screen, uh, and uh, I I think it's uh, everything is okay. Yes, you, you just uh, holding the groin for some minutes. I will move to the other room. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Salando.